So I, under I understand that this is being recorded, so I, I probably should be professional uh, throughout this. Like, who, who knows what I say will go on forever, become a meme somewhere. Um, but it, 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 if, if you're here uh, to, to listen to someone nerd out for a second and talk about uh, broken parts and, and how we've captured that in the book, you're in the right spot. So my, my first book, uh, Decoding Mechanical Failures, came out about 18 months ago. Now... The reason for this book is probably pretty obvious, and, and that is we as human beings are really good at breaking things. We Not only do we break everything that we want to work, we break them in very, very different ways, and sometimes it's very challenging to guess how and why something broke. And I think everyone listening here intuitively understands that if, you know, however something breaks, that's going to relate to what we need to do, what solutions we need to apply to prevent it. So obviously if something corrodes um, or something fails from an impact or something fails from fatigue for millions of loading cycles, each of those are going to require very different solutions. And so, and so we need to be able to understand, and when something breaks, we need to be able to diagnose why it broke to come back and have a fighting chance at developing an effective solution. And, and that's why when, when equipment fails in the reliability community, great efforts go into investigating uh, why that failure happened. And I think, I think I dare I say that any respectable RCA, as part of that investigation, like the, the beginning of it, they have to diagnose um, what the failure mode was. Is it, is it fatigue, you know, brittle from impact, corrosion? And then secondly, they need to be aware enough to know that once you make that diagnosis as something, that um, you know what to do with it. You know how that leads the remainder of the investigation towards the root cause. Now, when it comes to mechanical failures, such as ductile, brutal, and fatigue, the only way to diagnose uh, a part having failed by those is by looking at its fracture surface. The fracture features are literally recordings of how the part broke. They just need to be decoded, and you just need to know how. And for anyone involved in equipment failures, I would argue that there is incredible value in learning how to interpret fracture features. Now, I'm not saying don't send to your local lab like us, but I am saying that there's a lot of lot of cases, I know that there are a lot of cases being done where people are not sending to laboratories. I think the number is around 75% in the last poll I heard. And so for those people who are not sending out, having the ability to do that triage and look at the fracture features is of high value to make sure that they don't misdiagnose at the beginning and get the right thing. And so to support those efforts, uh, I wrote this book. To my knowledge, it is the very first book introducing um, how do we examine mechanical fracture features from scratch? Uh, we're talking again, ductile, brittle, and fatigue. And then secondly, that I think that very critical step is also very challenging to find beforehand in literature, which is once you make that diagnosis, how do you, how do you use that in a practical investigation towards, towards figuring out the root cause and coming up with a solution? Now, I, I quickly, I thought, you know, I was planning perhaps on flipping through the book, but I thought that would be pretty awkward trying to hold it up in the right spot. So, I'm just going to quickly switch to a video here, um, where where we where we go through it. Now, I I have you guys should be seeing a video, but I have been told the video the sorry the um, uh, the sound's not working. So I'm just going to try and narrate as I go along here. So this is my book, Decoding Mechanical Failures. The first thing that most people uh, say when they see it is that they're impressed by all the pictures. I think the only way you can really learn fra uh, fractography and learning exam fracture features is lots of pictures. Every chapter starts with just quickly a very need to know basis of what it is you're looking at, what that damage mechanism, in this case, ductile. And then we get to the good stuff. How do you recognize? What are the visual cues that you use to diagnose ductile overload? In every case, it has one, two, and three examples where we carefully go through. So example one, you're looking for this, 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 and this. And then at some point I will flip the page. Ah, example number two and example number three. There's some subsets that are good to know, some other things to be aware. And then we get into, now that you've made the diagnosis, now that you know how to diagnose something as ductile overload, how do you use that the remainder of your investigation? We do that a couple ways. We have flow diagrams, but we also explain the logic steps that that means. In the case of ductile overload, it simply means the loading was greater than the material strength. Next, we use a series of case studies. In each case study, you get a shot first to look at the fracture features. The answers are on the back, the next page. And we then thoroughly explain how that diagnosis is made and how that diagnosis was used for the, for, to, to figure out the root cause. And each chapter has a lot of examples. 
Now, I'm going to quickly switch back here for a second as I, as I close this off. Um, I, I'm pretty sure everyone can see why I chose to, sh to show that video. Uh, because look how fit I was back then. Like 18 months ago, and I looked like I was a little bit of an athlete. Now, uh, hopefully people don't see the difference from then and today. But I have a feeling that people will catch the COVID-19. The COVID 19, 19 pounds, right? You're allowed to gain nine, you're not allowed to gain 19 pounds in COVID. I thought that's what that number is for. Now, here I am saying that I think this is the first of its kind, it, that I think it's a very high-value book. But, but, I, but I'm the author. Of course, you guys are going to uh, you know, consider myself biased. So, so I want to say Amazon is the place that we, we, um, we sell most of our books. And we, we, we've actually got a pretty decent review. A lot of nice people have said nice things. Now, you're probably wondering if my mother is in here, uh, if she's one of the people, but she didn't buy a book. I gave her a book, so she couldn't comment. Uh, we've got some reviews. Uh, from, from, from people who I've never met before, and I think this is a pretty fair, fair review of the 4.8. Now, I've also got to say at some point is that, okay, you're thinking about reading a book. Hey, you guys know that my book is, is 4.8, but you're going to probably say, what, what other books on the market are also 4.8? Well, I like to say that we're amongst good company. You know, if you were, if you were interested in reading Michelle Obama's book, Becoming, she also has a 4.8 you know, a former first lady, like we're, we're kind of on the same level here. So if you're ever considering reading a book of that caliber, maybe you should also consider re reading Decoding Mechanical Failures. Now, what about some of the best books ever written in human history? Well, I, I, I understand asking some friends that they think that War and Peace is considered one of the best books ever written. It only has a 4.5 on Amazon. So if you're even considering reading this, don't read this, Will. Consider reading Decoding Mechanical Failures. Well, what, what about something like epic like Shakespeare? Only 4.6 Romeo and Juliet. So again, I think you guys should strongly consider on a Saturday night reading Decoding Mechanical Failures. Now, there are a few other books that people have made movies over. Hunger Games and Dune. Now, I, I mean, I don't want to say anything here, but you might notice that I also have a higher, a higher rating. Now, I'm not saying that my book is better than Shakespeare or better than Hunger Games, but I do believe Amazon is saying that. If there's any movie producers here in this audience, you might want to contact me for um, some screen rights. But I also need you guys to know that we actually already have an online performance. Um, we, we, made a, we made a course based off this book called Examining, uh, Introduction to Examining Fractures. It takes the book and then a one-day online instructor-led. Uh, it does this. So, so for anyone uh, interested in the movie rights, just know that we've got some ideas that we're already playing with and we're already sharing on a daily basis. Uh, so I hope, I hope under that, whether you trust me or you trust Amazon, uh, I hope you will consider re reading my book.